everybody. Welcome to another episode of Stumpcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Why Is Jasmine Losing Her Shit? Already. Ash and already. Price. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Hi. everybody. Jasmine is losing her shit already. Yeah, Haven't even it, started. Like she does. <laughs> it's that time and of the year, y'all. It's that time of the year, exactly, Price. It is the end of the year, which means... It's the year in review. I love waiting until the end of the year, and then we get a recap. Wait. All the cool shit that's happened at the end of the... What? Is it really the end of the year already? It yeah, is the Chris end of the year. I'm not paying attention Chris... to what day it is anymore. Oh, my God. Yeah, Jasmine, we're... it's been December for 14 days. We've only got... I can't believe that. Oh my God. 16 more days left in this month. Oh, Jasmine, my your birthday's are coming over. up. Right my around the corner. 20s are over. <laughs> 20, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, once it's you done. get past... Once you once you enter the thirties, then you just start losing track of time. I mean, it's all honestly, just a big beautiful blur. I feel it like once you hit like how blur. I see every day. Once you hit like twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, I feel like yeah. the, the years you just, you just oh, you're, you're still a up. baby, Price. You're you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Price is already given up at twenty five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is going to be our year in review episode. We're going to talk about uh, some of the stuff that. Uh, we loved and some of the stuff that we didn't really love from 2015. But before we get started, like we do every week, let's talk about how was your week. So, Price, why don't you start us off this week? Uh, how was your let's week, see. Buddy? Uh, so last week was the last week of the term. So I gave my students their final, and I've been I did all my grading and everything like that. I actually finished up all my grades today. So other than like collating them and sending them off to the university, I'm done. You're a free got, man. I'm, I'm on break, which yeah. is great. Free pig. Because free man, pig. It, it has a free pig, free the pig. Yeah, and uh, this wild. pig you cannot chain. No, no I'm gonna fly. Whoa, this pig's whoa. gonna fly. Just fly, 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 fly. <laughs> uh, so, what have I been doing? Um, well, while I've been doing my grading and editing and all that kind of stuff, um, I have been playing a couple of games. I picked up. Sniper Elite 3 on the last sale because I think yeah, it was you like... you won't shut up about that. It was, it was a lot of fun. Well, just because when I started playing, I was so surprised by it because I assumed it was just like, you know, they plop you into a spot and you're a sniper and you take stuff out. But actually, it reminds me a lot of Hitman where it's like they drop you into essentially a, a big sandbox level and then they'll give you like your targets in that level and you have to like find your way through the level, find a right. place to hide, set up all your stuff. You know, there's this whole mechanic of if you like get near something that makes a lot of noise you can mask your shots if you fire right when the noise makes it goes oh, so it's okay. like That's cool. so like you hit like a generator so it'll like pop every now and then and so you get used to like the rhythm of the generator and then when it pops, that's when you fire. And so it's like those little kinds of things make it more like a puzzle game than like a first person shooter. And that's exactly what I liked about Hitman was it, it really feels more like a puzzle game than anything. You're trying to figure out like the perfect way to carry out everything. So Sniper Elite, I've been playing a bit, a bit of that. And actually, I just yesterday, for some reason or another, I decided to reinstall Saints Row 4. Yeah, uh, I thought you playing that. Dude, that game is so good. It's just it's yeah. a weird game. It's so weird, but like it's one of those ones where it's like they so quickly start you off with just turning you into like a crazy superhero that Absolutely. like you just you fly around, you bust stuff up, you just have a good time. It's like it's such a good mindless, like just mind numbing type of game. Honestly, and you're like, I just want to sit back and whatever. Honestly, the beginning of that game is the best where you're basically trying to stop that rocket and then you Don't hear, you know, Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It's so, so good. Row is such a I mean. The entire franchise is so bizarre to me because Saints Row started as like Xbox's mm -hmm. answer to mm -hmm. Grand Theft Auto. Right. Yep. And then they were like, oh, everybody likes the crazy aspects of this game. So let's just take the crazy up a notch. And every single new sequel was just like, how can we make it crazier? You well, know? Uh, and so, like, what started as just a Grand Theft Auto clone became mm -hmm. like this just bizarre. Yeah thing of its own which is awesome you know but i mean it all just started because they wanted to compete with grand theft auto yeah from from i never even played the first saints row from what i understand it's not very good um but saints row 2 like that was one that was probably the most grand theft auto like mm -hmm. and i remember mm -hmm. when saints row 3 came out there was all this hype around it and so i think all of us we were kind of like all right maybe we'll check it out you know uh and that one blew my mind like saints row 3 i was like this yeah. game is amazing because that's Sa when they started getting silly Sa saints row 3 is where they decided to make the game that they wanted to make you know? exactly <laughs> and so like then like Saints Row 3 was like a heightened version of Grand Theft Auto. And then Saints Row 4 is just straight up like, you're a superhero. <laughs> it just jumps you're like... You're the president and a superhero. You're the, you're the you're president superhero in president the Matrix. Superhero. Like, it's just ridiculous. So, uh, it is... 
Such a fun game. I'm so glad I started playing it again. And honestly, I could see myself maybe a couple months down the line doing like a playthrough, like starting from Saints Row 3 <laughs> and going all the way through Saints Row 4 uh, because those games, they're just so much fun. They, I like, love that with all of the games that are coming out right now, mm -hmm. you're just like, like Fallout 4. We've all been playing Fallout 4. You're like yeah. nuts to Dude, that. I'm going like, to put that on the shelf. Just I'm Cause 3, that. which basically is like okay. Saints Row. Fa hey, Fair Ash, enough, but I don't hey, have 60 Ash, bucks to spend on, to, on Just Cause huh? 3. Yeah, seriously, where's that, huh? Yeah. I want some more Rico Rodriguez doing odd jobs. Yeah. Rico We've gotten Rodriguez, requests for it. Uh, Speaking of, control. <laughs> let's talk about Ash. How's your week been? Dude, okay, so I got I to gotta bring up this. I've been waiting for like months. Uh, so, so like... I forget when it was, but the creator of Toji and Earl did a Kickstarter months ago. Yep. A long time ago. I, I remember that. I finally got my Kickstarter ah! reward. <laughs> Funkatron. <laughs> so awesome. Um, I also have the whole Funkatron ship and, uh, and Toe Jam, little Carrot Man, a couple posters, a whole bunch of swag. I kickstarted that game for way too much money that I don't want I know. I, yeah, I, I won't say it either, but when I heard how much you kicked on it for, once I saw the swag you got, I was like, okay, it was worth it. Ash, <laughs> the vinyls are pretty good. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Well, and, and Ash is like a true blue Toe Jam and Earl. No, like, fan if there boy. was like, any Kickstarter, yeah. that's the one that I was going to kickstart the most. Um, yeah. So, yeah. we Me and Jazz have played both of those games, or uh, we played the first two uh, on the channel. Um, the mm -hmm. third one, I would play on the channel if it. If an emulator existed for Xbox, or if we've I discussed this yeah, on, I don't think it's that. Uh, <laughs> on some old podcasts, yeah, that game's racist, yo. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just, yeah, it, it's uh, it's just going to oh get boy. better with a new one. <laughs> um, so yeah, besides that, uh, my week's been good. I've been playing some Rocket League. I've been playing. I don't know what I, I have. I mean, we, we've just been doing like a lot of channel stuff. Really, yeah. it's been yeah. really busy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been really busy at Casa de Jazz and Ash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, c Christmas cookies. Christmas Casa cookies. Casa del Smashing. Um, we, we, me and Jazz baked like, how many do you think? Like 48? Over about 50. Oh, 50 Mel and I sandwiches. just did our, uh, did our Christmas cookies last night. I saw pictures. Well. Yeah. yeah. Those look delicious. Yeah. And then Ash still needs to make his cookies. So I still need to make my cookies tonight. Because um, I do shortbreads like Jammy Dodgers. They're oh, yeah. Little, little I remember the Jammy Dodgers. Just, you know. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to New that. Year's Eve is all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I know. It's going to be fun. Uh, so, yeah, that's been my week. All right. Jazz? Yeah. Same. Cookies. And uh, I am really frustrated at Undertale. <laughs> yeah. I. So, what's up? Was screaming so loud at how hard that stupid Undyne is. Undyne. That oh, fish boy. lady. Mm. And it's because it's you're doing a pacifist run, right? So, it's yeah. like you can't kill her. You have to like. Yeah. Oh my god, I want to kill her because I cannot. St I seriously, I probably did like. You'll never see it, but there's probably about twenty times where I'm trying to kill. Just you know, just Undyne. I think is the only. I I did the first run before I really knew anything about uh, mm -hmm. Undertale, like that there was a such thing as a pacifist run. Mm -hmm. yeah. I knew vaguely that you could play the game without killing anybody. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that Dine Undyne was the only person I killed. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, she she most of the attacks are easy. You got mm -hmm. this one where you just have to dodge spears, one mm -hmm. that's just like you have to go side by step, you know, step out of the way. But then she's got this one attack where she turns you green, you can't move, and you basically have a shield. And you just have to shield your attacks from like this DDR like coming in from four sides. Oh, yeah. Uh... And so when they come in, they start slow, then they start getting faster. Right. And they get a little right. faster. And then they get to the point where you're just like, you have to go boop, 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 boop. And then they start throwing you curveballs, these yellow fucking assholes <laughs> like these yellow arrows that are backwards and when they're backwards they spin around you and then they come in yes, from the other side i remember uh, that and that's so the thing annoying. that screws me up the most and like, i end up using all of my health trying to heal and then i'm like okay i'm <laughs> sparing you so much why won't you just stop the fucking fight and then i get to the point where i'm like okay i'm at two health now i'm gonna get hit again god please do not let me get oh fuck i got hit again and it's just like that for 20 times and i just I haven't beaten her yet. I think that's why I ended up killing her and nobody <laughs> else because I was like, there's no way to get her to stop. Like, it seemed like no matter how many times I spared her, she was like, nope, we're, we're keeping this thing going. You're going yeah, to have to kill going. me. So she just keeps going. And there's I'm, no I'm way looking, to stop it. I think it. you need to find the rhythm to it, you know? What? It's like a dance. You just have to, <laughs> like, God. really move and find the groove to no, it. No, Ash, right? I, I, know, I know what Jazz is talking about. Those arrows that... that 
come back at you. Like yeah. you once you think that you've got the rhythm down, you're like, no, it's like it's so hard to predict those those arrows coming up. It's, it's I actually very like backtracked to go back to the like the last vendor and bought like as much money as I could mm-hmm. of uh, just healing stuff. So I've gone back and it's, it's such a bitch. It's just such a bitch because it's just <laughs> the the way the levels progress. It's nice because you kind of get the story and you kind of like learn like the whole backstory of like what they're doing down there and how they came to be and why they had this war. And it's nice because it's like this whole atmospheric thing. But when you're backtracking and trying to go back, you realize, holy shit, this took forever to get from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, I can uh, certainly feel your pain, and I've had similar issues with Titan Souls. Yeah, which uh, I've been playing through on. on but you recently Stuff beat it, right? You, you didn't mention that, and no, I, I didn't mention that. Hey, in my, I'll allow in my you the, the floor right now. You <laughs> had your chance to talk about how your week was. Yeah, yeah. Rick, how was your week? Uh, my week's been pretty good. Uh, so today I watched a documentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, called uh, Electric Boogaloo. I watched it too. Did you watch it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a documentary uh, about Canon Films. Yeah. And what's great about this is Canon Films was like the, uh, not quite as bad as the Asylum because uh, Asylum, they make purposely, yeah. purposefully <clears throat> bad movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. we had this Canon Films, they wanted to make good movies. And it was uh, two guys from Israel, this one guy uh, and his cousin. And in Israel, they were like big filmmakers yep. because Israel yep. had a really shitty film market. <laughs> so uh, they did. Uh, I mean, and also the sensibilities of the Israelis were different from that of the Americans. They wanted to come to Hollywood. They wanted to make it big. Mm-hmm. So they ended up buying this production company called Canon Films that was going under. And they are the reason that we have so many bad 80s movies. So like... All of the Death Wish sequels, that's Canon Films. Masters of the Universe, that's Canon Films. Life Force, Canon Films. They made so like uh, Delta Force, <laughs> Canon Films. All of these ridiculously bad movies. And the thing is, just like any great bad movie, it has to be made with passion. It has to be made by somebody who says, I think this thing that I'm making is going to be great. And every single movie that they made. They were like, this is going to be yeah. the one. This will be the one that brings us the Oscar. Yeah. And, like every single one was worse Brooke, than the next. Brook Shields, Sahara, Oscar. But, Oscar. It, <laughs> but this production company lasted about 20 years. <laughs> and they got big, like uh, over the top. That was uh, Canon Films as yeah. well. They thought that like, okay, let's double down. We're losing money. Let's just hire big name actors. Put a big name actor in a movie and it's going to be great. Get Sylvester Stallone. Turns out they hired Sylvester Stallone. Like, his agent was like, he won't do it even if you paid him $10 million. So they were like, what about $12 million? What about $15 million? They ended up paying him $20 million. Oh, my God. To do, which was what? unheard of. Insane. Like, Insane before in that, yeah. Sylvester Stallone had been paid, like, maybe $3 million tops to yep. do a leading role. They were like, we don't care. We'll give you whatever you want to make this movie. And they made over the top. That's what they did yeah. with Sylvester Stallone. It, it's it's just this crazy story about this production company that wanted so badly to make a great movie and no matter what they did, they couldn't they couldn't not fail. And to, to be fair though, like their their issue seemed to be that like they were so excited and passionate that they would just start making a movie like before the script is done, before like any of the ideas had fully matured. It oh, was yeah. like uh, like the movie Break In is one of their actually successful films. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, is like it came about because like his niece was having a conversation with him and told him that oh kids are really into this uh, break dancing thing right now. And so like he looked it up. He was like, this is good be huge and it decides like we're gonna make this movie so they just started making the movie they like hired two break dancers they just started filming stuff and then figured out how to make it fit yeah. and so they just like that kind of approach to filmmaking you're never gonna strike like yeah. oscar gold you might get a couple of hits here and there but you can't just start because they were, they were so <laughs> concerned wow. about like just like quantity over quality at one point they had like 50 movies coming out in a year when yeah. most production companies what? like if you had 10 movies coming out in a year that's a lot they had like 50 they had filming going on simultaneously in the united states europe africa and asia at the same time so many how, movies are being shot that even how, how they, did they didn't know what movies are being shot to do all of this that's the thing is they everything that they they were constantly getting loans to make the next money and then they were paying those loans off with the income that they would be getting from the next movie and so, they were also like is, 
real sticklers about like where the money yeah. went. Like a big part that they hammer on in the um, thing is that like you know food they wouldn't cater. They would like you know they would uh, you're, you're getting paid minimum wage no matter what oh, position and they you're broke in. Like, union roles yeah. like crazy, like, like crazy, crazy. You've got some of these actors like they had Sharon Stone before Sharon Stone was anybody, you know, and they had Sharon Stone doing stuff that like no sane actor would do by today's yep. standards, you know, yep. because they just skirted all of the rules. You know, uh, and at first it was successful because their business model was like the asylum where it was like, OK, we're just going to make a really cheap budget movie. Exactly. And then we're going to try to flip it and try to make a profit. But mm -hmm. then towards the end, when they really wanted to, like, make an Oscar award winning movie, they started pumping a ton of money into yep. their production. But it was still terrible. It was still <laughs> terrible because they didn't okay. know how to make a good movie. Here's something. They originally owned the film rights to Spider-Man. And planned to make a Spider-Man movie in the mid 1980s. No. Wow, I would have <laughs> loved to see that. But the agreement was is that um, for they agreed to pay Marvel comments 225 thousand over the five year option period plus the percentage of film revenues, but they had to have 000? made the movie before 1990. Two hundred twenty-five thousand. Mm. That is peanuts. That's peanuts. such peanuts. Yeah, peanuts for because they had to make the film before nineteen ninety, which they never did, and it went one of back the movies to Marvel that, and Columbia. One of the <laughs> movies that they thought would save their production company as it was tanking was Superman Four, and. <sighs> Christopher Reeves said that he would only do it if he could have input on what the story was going to be about, which is why it was the story about like the end of nuclear war. He was going to gather up all the nuclear weapons and throw them. But then these two guys, these two cousins who ran the company, they wanted their input. So they were like, we need a villain. And then they made this ridiculous villain called Nuclear Man. <laughs> <laughs> and then the movie just went off the rails. Yeah, it's, I wanna, it's, I wanna, it's awesome. I you should all watch just it. Just watch all of the canon films it films. looks pretty good i mean oh god that'll be, that'll be for our next bad movie night oh yes definitely. canon night since, so uh, that, oh man since that's our last what i've podcast, done we haven't week. talked about jingle all the way which we all did as well oh, yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> we can have a brief discussion about our uh <laughs> brief how brief is it going <laughs> no, to be guys can't. This no we can't because already. we've already run pretty long like that's we true. do that's true we, we've been really good about talking a lot in our how is our week segment before we couldn't talk enough and now we just can't shut the fuck up okay so now we're gonna roll into uh the year in review because that's why you guys came to this podcast you want to know about our input on the year of gaming Absolutely. and movies and pop culture in general so <laughs> i put together a list of uh 10 categories that mm -hmm. i thought would be suitable for our year in review and i didn't get much uh, pushback from you guys, so we're gonna roll with that, and I figure let's go ahead and start with the number one category for our year in review. And this one was actually pretty tough for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's really this, hard. This was actually <clears throat> really tough for for best me. say what it is leading yeah. game character. Yeah. So I, I just want to ju just and this is yep. just my own personal opinion. I think 2015 was a shitty year for leading game character. I think it was, <laughs> um, especially. For leading game character, original, original leading game character. Absolutely. There was a ton of sequels that were great, um, that obviously have established game characters, but for original game characters, it was a shitty year. I um, absolutely agree. I, I searched through several, like, uh, release schedules from 2015 to see, mm -hmm. like, okay, is there anything that I was missing, anything that I forgot? And a lot of it is sequels. And I was thinking if I had played The Witcher 3, which I haven't yet, mm -hmm. but it's gotten a lot of... There's blue. Wow. A lot of great reviews. Uh, that something. Gerald from Witcher 3 might be a candidate because I know that a lot of people have really liked Absolutely. that game. Like, uh, but again, it's not original. It's not original. Snake. Snake might be a candidate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lore, Lore Croft might right. be a candidate. Um, but no, yeah. They're, it, it's, it's, I think it's been a weak year. And yeah. then so, the other part I would say is that we don't play a ton of single player games. Uh, that are on consoles and whatnot. Like we play, we're all mostly PC people. So a lot of the big, you know, like Halo and stuff like that, we never touch. So sure. that may be another part of it. You know, even with that in mind, I mean, like I, I, like the last great original leading character, like maybe like the first thing that comes to mind for me is like maybe Nathan Drake. No, I was I was thinking um like Jasmine from uh, Bioshock Infinite. Um, yeah, Booker. Wait, Booker. Booker. Booker DeWitt. Booker DeWitt. Um, you know, no, but, but, but okay. But these, these... Here's how, here's what I would argue about Booker DeWitt. I say Nathan Drake because Nathan Drake had a personality. 
He stood alone as a character. Booker was, I mean, he I did mean, have mo- a little bit of personality, but most of the time he was an uh, he was a uh, mo- most of his an story was fed to sure. him rather than him delivering the story to <laughs> right. us. Right. Um, but I say he's not as bad as uh, the like the main protagonist in Fallout Four, which just isn't a character exactly. Yeah. Yeah, or or it just is such a place for you to put yourself that like right. your version of the character is going to be completely different than my version of the character. So it's like to judge that as a character, it just doesn't make any sense. So with that in mind, yeah. let's talk about our nominees for best leading game character for 2015. Of let's course. start with Ash. Since, uh, uh, let's start with Ash because it's a mystery. We 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 filled out a uh, a sheet that I made <laughs> on a Google Doc and. Uh, Ash didn't fill out his. I did he wanted, he wanted to leave it a mystery so he could shock us. All right, fine. Uh, I'll start. So <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just preface this as saying this isn't my game of the year or anything. I, I judge this as being the most memorable character, uh, the character that stood out most for me of all the games this year. Dropsy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 Dropsy. That's enough. a good call. That's Fair a good enough. call. Dropsy nice. was an awesome character. He t- had a ton of expression for his face. He didn't even talk. He couldn't talk. His language was gibberish. Um, it was all he did was hug, yet you could feel the emotions from him, and he had an overarching story to a, his whole narrative. So yeah, I thought he was a great character. That, I think that's fair. That's solid, fair. solid answer. That's yeah. pretty solid. Yeah, Jazz, what's your character? I didn't what, have what's your one. Pick? I had a hard time thinking about that because I didn't really play a lot of single player character games that involved a uh, leading character. Like Fallout is yourself. You're the mm-hmm. you know the protagonist in the entire thing. Your choices are based on whatever. I still haven't finished that game. Yeah. I haven't finished Undertale either, so I can't say anything for that. So, I you fair, were enough. Pick, um, fair enough. Was it the uh, Bro- Broken Age? Yeah, Broken Age was good, but that wasn't 2015 either because oh. it came out. Yeah, in that was last year. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. No. Jazz controversially doesn't have a pick. Wow. How dare you? Already right. just breaking the rules. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and go. So I picked uh, Artanis from uh, StarCraft II: The Legacy of the Void, mostly because. As a longtime StarCraft fan, <clears throat> I felt like I never really liked Artanis before. I always thought he was very boring. You've got people like Tassadar and Zeratul and Phoenix, who are all these badass characters who surround him. And he was just this like, hey guys, maybe we should go and like stop the Zerg or something. And so he was just so boring before. And hey, talk about like a yeah, a 180. He is a badass in Legacy of the Void. Like, I love Artanis. I think they did such a great job of making him feel like this guy is the leader of the Protoss. He, like, feels that weight and that burden. He takes it seriously, and he kicks ass. So, uh, yeah, Artanis, I I really enjoyed. Really enjoyed. Artanis? Artanis, leader of the Protoss. I chose, uh, because it was so hard to choose, uh, because it it was so hard to pick one, just one, uh, I picked Goliath from Evolve. Because, <laughs> which, I think that's great. That's the best leading game character. That's because I. That's He's the character the that I most enjoyed playing. I think out of the year, uh, I, I really loved playing as Goliath, and also I picked up a Popcat. Goliath yeah. from Pack. That's true. That's, that's true. huge. He's sitting on my shelf and he's so cute. And he's huge. You I've think never seen of, a Popcat that big. Yeah, he's very mm-hmm. big and uh, he's very cute. And you would not, you wouldn't think of Goliath as being cute, but I look at him every day and I think like, nah. I, there's something I about you. There's something about you. I remember, when we, found, I remember when we found that booth. Me and Rick are by ourselves. We we're just kind of like, let's go buy things. Mm-hmm. And we <laughs> found ourselves yeah, bought, like, at the two K booth. booth. And I was like, oh look, there's like, there's little uh um. Shit, what's this called? What's his face called? Uh, from uh, Borderlands. Claptrap. Yeah. Clap oh, trap. yeah, I got right. a Claptrap as right. well. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, nice. I want the Claptrap. And then Rick's like, I'm going to get that Goliath. Yeah, I got the Claptrap <laughs> and the Goliath. I'm going to give me that Goliath. A little, little, little bit of Goliath. <laughs> I spent so much money on <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah That's that what PAX does to you. All right. So, uh, yeah, best leading game character. Uh, I thought, you know, when I was putting together the list that it would be a lot easier to choose than it was. Mm-hmm. Not so mm-hmm. easy. Yeah. Not so easy these days. And I wonder... If you go back like 20 years and you had the same question, it was like uh, 1985. No, I guess 1995. 1995. Holy shit. I was going to say, uh, oh my God. <laughs> All right, even then. Uh, if you had to pick a best game, leading game character, how difficult would that be? That would Not be back then? Easy. No. Sonic, yeah. Toe Jam and Earl, 
All of those. So many options. Bam. Well, well, Earl in, wins. In, yeah. <laughs> in 95, <laughs> what, we would have been at the beginning of the PlayStation era, right? So, I mean, there, there are tons of games every year that had extremely memorable characters. Like, I yeah. can think almost for every year that came out after that, it was like, you know, you had the Resident Evil games coming out, you had the Final Fantasy get like, tons. Mm -hmm. But, like, they just... Nowadays, Pro because trigger. a lot of games that we play are... You make your own character... Or they're multiplayer focused, so there's no one main character. There's a bunch I, of main characters. I, I think that the problem these days is that the characters are empty. They're meant to be a vessel, a vessel for you yeah. to experience the story in. Yeah. Um, they don't have any storytelling to themselves mm -hmm. at all. Um, Which is yeah. no, it's no bad thing. It helps in a lot of games to like make you feel like you're a part of it. But it just means that when you're picking a best leading game character, it makes it a little bit difficult. Well, I think <laughs> it depends on what kind of game you're playing. You know, like, sure. Um, as one of my elective courses. I got to do a uh, video game programming course, mm. which was actually pretty cool. And I got to build a game in Game Maker. Uh, and I have a textbook for it still. And it talks about the importance of an avatar in game making, which is, you know, like you said, a vessel for the player to become this thing. But it doesn't work in every game. Like there, And I feel like m more games are trying to do that now mm. where you don't necessarily need to do that you know mm -hmm. like in a first person shooter then sure like you need to feel immersed into the game you need to feel like you're there you know but uh there there are certain games where i feel like if you just have a protagonist you don't ne necessarily need to attach the player to that protagonist i feel sure. that's like it works in certain games especially when games that are like full of like lore and ex exploration mm -hmm. like um we were talking about earlier uh bioshock infinite you play booker Mm -hmm. Booker is not something a vessel. He is a fully right. fleshed character, and right. you're experiencing, um, what was that? Columbia Rapture or Columbia? Columbia. Yeah, Columbia, you're, yeah. you're experiencing Columbia through his eyes, and then right. you're also like he has his own goals and everything. So when you're actually going through the game, you just become completely immersed in the story that they've very well built. And right. Oh. And every now and then he has conversations, you know, yeah. uh, with Elizabeth. And so it's like you're hearing them talk, those yeah. characters. You're not making choices about what to say. Right. Mm -hmm. They talk. And yeah. so that I would, yeah, I agree. I think Booker, you know, back for whenever Infinite came out like a year or two ago. It was Jesus. 2013. Yeah. Fuck. Um, yeah, I know. That, that, I actually that, kind that, of want to replay yeah. that. It was such a beautiful game. I really like the game. That's one of those games I feel like... Uh, now that time's gone, on, gone by, people yeah. give it a lot of <clears throat> criticism. Mm -mm. In retrospect, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't think that I think you're misremembering because I feel like that game was really great. Like I, the, I feel like uh, a lot of people online, especially like in the Reddit community, give like the graphics a hard time. Like, like no, the bullshit. graphics were groundbreaking at the yeah. time. It was beautiful. Yeah. We were all amazed when we first played no. that game. You know, it got a lot of criticism at the time. Like, I mean, I remember getting a lot of criticism at the time because, mm -hmm. like, while it was this new beautiful thing, I remember like half the people playing like, Ugh, it's not Bioshock. But it's like it's not meant it's, to it's, be Bioshock. That's it's the, it's point. the complete opposite <laughs> it's, it's, of Bioshock. It's one of the most fully realized experiences that a triple A game has ever been. So you know? beautiful. Yeah. So many triple so A games new, would so never different. and they probably never will invest yeah. in an experience like that ever again. Yeah. yeah. That's, um, it's so I really think we sad. can all agree yeah. twenty fifteen best character is Booker. Booker. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we really wanted a tangent there. Yeah, we Jeez, should move we on. What's your list. best game, guys? <laughs> best game. We're we're starting with best game already, huh? Like, all yeah. right, all right. Uh, uh, Rice. Okay, you're I'll first go. on my list, list. So let's yeah. go ahead. All and, uh, right. I have. I actually. I couldn't pick one. So already again breaking the rules. But it's for different reasons. So um, one that you guys are all probably aware of from our channel. Um, I think Ultimate Chicken Horse is probably the best multiplayer game that came out this year. In my I'm opinion, not sure, I'm not sure it counts, man. Why? Because it's you can't not buy it. Yeah, it's not. It's not full release yet. Well, fine. But, but I will the say game that I played game. this year. What? Oh, I'm Go saying ahead, it is a good game because they took a game mechanic mm -hmm. that was really working well. Then yeah. they decided to let's alter it, and it became even better. That's yeah, probably no. why I think it's a really good. The game. update from uh, like about two weeks ago when we yeah. started playing uh, blew my mind. Like yeah. they, they did things that I couldn't anticipate them doing, but they made a game that was already fun, like way more fun and mm -hmm. way more playable. Like the 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 longevity of this game is through the roof now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so so for. For what it what I can say for Ultimate Chicken Horse for being one of my games of the year, <clears throat> it's just a game that I always have fun playing. Like every time we sit down and play it, I'm like excited and ready to go. Like I'm just yes, Chicken Horse, I love it. So it's like that game. I I'm totally down to keep playing for for forever. It's just like it 
is always a fun time. So that that's my one. Let's go to another one that probably shouldn't count. Um, <laughs> is uh, StarCraft II Legacy of the Void for story reasons. But the reason I say it shouldn't count is because I'm kind of including actually just all of StarCraft II in there because... You know, it's the third part of what was a planned uh, trilogy. Yeah. And so kind of part of what makes Legacy of the Void so good is the build up through Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm. So it's kind of like how, you know, uh, Return of the King won all the Oscars. Uh, that's that's where I'm feeling like with Legacy of the Void for me right now is it's like it's everything that's built up over the Starcraft 2 kind of saga really came together really well. And if you're a lore fiend like I am, they... I have never felt like I understood the Protoss better than after Legacy of the Void, and especially like all the little things that like never made any sense before. The little phrases that they say that you just kind of like it goes in one ear and out the other, like Adun told me thus, like that kind of stuff. Like you learn what every single one of those things mean. You learn what the Void is, which is not actually space, which is what I always thought it was. I thought the Void meant empty space. It's the space between universes, essentially, uh, and. You learn all about the like deep history of the Zerg and the Protoss from like the point of creation. Like, I mean, it's like deep philosophical stuff. Yeah, uh, I, I need I need to replay that stuff. I still haven't beaten the Heart of the Swarm, but I heard uh, that they are going to do episodic story stuff yes. with a, a ghost. Is that Nova. Right? Nova. 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 No. The, who is a ghost? But yeah, they're, they're starting like sometime in like February or March. They're going to start doing like short little episodic mission things. Yeah. So you know the the big arc is over, but we're still going to get some more StarCraft coming um, down the line. So that's you know Legacy of the Void definitely up there as just fantastic, but mostly just for StarCraft Two in general. So what's a game that came out <laughs> that I played this year that I think you know is great? Chroma Squad. I had a ton of fun playing Chroma Squad. Uh, I think that it did a great job of capturing the um, like the humor and like the the writing was just so clever and like making a game about essentially Power Rangers, but like being on the set of a TV show where you're making a Power Ranger show that then turns into real Power Rangers. Like it was just so silly and wonderful. Yeah, I was just I wasn't ready for it, and <laughs> I just I loved it throughout the whole time, and I had a whole ton of fun making that series. So. So yeah, Chroma Squad. So those three. UCH, Chroma Squad, StarCraft 2. Nice. Ash, I want to find out what yours is because it's, again, mystery to all of us. What's your game of the year? All of you could probably guess. It's Rocket League. Rocket yeah. League. Yeah. Yeah. It has yeah. to be Rocket League. Um, wow. This guy's put so many hours into this. Not a shocker. Not a shocker. That, it that replaced game, Trackmania I, for you. <laughs> I started, yeah. I mean, it's replaced Trackmania for me. Uh, that game, I started playing the beta of it on PS4 way back in like December last year, I think. Mm -hmm. And Back when I was in the beta, like no one really knew about it. It came out of nowhere. It's become an esport now. Hundreds of thousands of people are playing it. It's become a monster. Yeah, they're it's... really good at it too, and they make me feel oh, really dude. bad about myself. Yeah. So I, I I love everything about Rocket League. I think that is a perfect example of an indie studio taking a concept. It was a game called um supersonic rocket powered something or other yeah i'm um, happy they shortened that which, really? yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah i had the stupidly long name but it was a game before that was basically the exact same game except with horrible graphics right um like four years ago or so and they basically said let's make the exact same game let's really tighten the controls let's really just tighten everything about it make it on a beautiful engine and bam rocket it's League. now fucking a monster knockout hit knockout fantastic out. game fantastic game love it mm -hmm. And and they've got the new uh, winter update. Winter update, yep. which we're going to be uh, playing. Is that payable? Do you have to pay for that? No, it's free. Sweet. Yeah, yeah we, all the uh, updates that they've had so far have been free. Well, not not the, the uh, not the, the co cosmetic stuff. Right, not so, the cosmetic stuff, but any anything else. So we're going to be doing a collab with some other uh, YouTubers coming up soon, playing some Rocket League. Yep. Um, and I will say. One of them has played it quite a lot. <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> this I'm one? Worried. Are you sure it's not this one right here? Uh, well, this that's the one? thing. So we're going to have to make sure that uh, that uh, she and Ash are on different teams, I think, yeah. every time. But uh, So we'll see how that goes out. I didn't really think about it, but like I realized like I was like, oh, every week more episodes are going up on her channel. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this is bad. <laughs> so, so she might wipe the floor with us. But either way, it's going to be a fun time. Absolutely. I'm going to try my always those uh, lucky shots that happen every once in a while. That's, That's you and me, Jazz. That's what we do. <laughs> Luck shots. So, Jazz, uh, I'm curious to hear what you have for best game because of all the talking that you were doing earlier about this game. Okay. So, I have a split one. Yeah. Fallout, because I love Fallout. I, I can't get enough of that so lore. 
It's also become my best home simulator game ever. <laughs> it's great. It's really good for that. I have built a little mini mart shot like little like it's not like I, don't, I can't it's like a mall basically <laughs> in sanctuary i built this like tiny mall it has like a little cafe upstairs it has you know i'm looking for more of those mods that i can like insert more um decorations but yeah no that game's amazing i love it i'm starting to learn the backstory of some of my characters mostly uh nick because i kind of like his whole deal and the fact that he's like you know oh he's completely different than what i thought i was because when I first met him, I was like, holy shit, you are not what I thought at all. I'm not going to spoil What did it. you think at first? I just thought he was like a normal person. But when I found out he was, you know, not... Spoilers. Oh, that he was, Spoilers. Uh, that he Spoilers. was not a normal person? Yes. That he was, he's completely... Especially for all the crazy, you know, xenophobic shit that was happening in Diamond City. I was really surprised that he was... That's who he was. So Do I, do I take my headphones off? No, no, Ear no. Muffs. It's, it's... Earmuffs. Uh, but though, yeah, that's, so that's, that's kind of like my, my fallback, but this year I'm really surprised by Undertale only because I have never really played a game that's just so different in Mm -hmm. every single way. The fact that you don't have to kill things, everything is solved with, um, just either puzzles or just by like talking to things. Like I could talk to somebody in a game and they'll be like, oh, okay, we're cool now. We're friends. Then I could spare them and they give me money. That's great. And then also just like the fact that the game is just littered with like lots of little tiny Easter eggs and like just things that constantly like throw me off. Like in the most recent Undertale, uh, I had been swept away because I, you know, got chased by Undyne and she broke the bridge and I fell into like this river that's like at the bottom of this cavern. And as I'm trying to figure out where I am and trying to leave, all of a sudden this training dummy comes out of life and he's just like, well, you know what? You talked to my cousin and uh, you scared him so much with what you said that I want to kill you. And so this training dummy comes to life <laughs> and just like flips his shit and just tries to attack me. And it's just, I, I didn't expect that at all. Mm-hmm. And the way it happened was just, it threw me off. And so, yeah, yeah. that's why I, I've i added it as my game of the year because it's just completely different than anything else I've ever played. It is. Yeah. And I will say to you and to uh, anybody who's watching right now that if you liked <clears throat> Undertale, Check out my favorite game of all time, Earthbound, because I guarantee you that the developer of Undertale was very inspired by Earthbound. Yeah. The fighting mechanic of Undertale is pretty much just taken directly from Earthbound. Uh, and a lot of the humor of Undertale is very reminiscent of mm-hmm. Earthbound. Earthbound is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. It's just a delight to play and even now it holds up really well yeah um, and, and also like the art and the kind of like surreal yeah. uh nature of everything i feel like earthbound has that as well as undertale like yeah. they both kind yeah. of have a and similar then, but style. undertale that and that's what initially drew me to undertale and undertale was great i agree mm-hmm. jazz like i i really had a great time playing Undertale. yeah so, and part of the thing that i really like about it is that the 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 fighting mechanic constantly evolves as you play yeah yeah that's really cool learn that every character in that game has its own different style of fighting you like um so far um you learn that you know when you're blue you you don't have to move you just stand still you won't get hurt uh undying you turn green that means you can't move at all so you have to block things that are coming at you so there's just every time you play there's just the fighting never gets stale you always know that there's going to be something different as you uh, keep playing. So yep. that's why I like it. So Rick, what's your favorite game of the year? My favorite game is Ori in the Blind Forest. Right on. I really loved playing Ori. Ori was one of the first games in a while that I was just like, once I stopped playing, it's almost like a good book. You're like, oh, I got to I gotta figure out what's going on. I got to pick that <laughs> back up and play it immediately. So it was one of the first games where, like, as soon as I got home, I was like, I'm going to hop back on. I'm going to play Ori. I'm going to figure out how to get past this thing. And the story is so simple but so compelling because you play as Ori, who's this cute little being, this cute little mammal with the floppy ears and whatnot. And he's an orphan. He's been taken care of by this big guy that's kind of like a Totoro kind of character. And uh, and something's happening to the forest. It's dying. And so you're trying to revive the forest. But there's this terrible owl that is your nemesis throughout the game. But it turns out that maybe, you know, things aren't what they seem as far as, you know, like the motives of this terrible owl and whatnot. But I thought it was a really good message. And it was really, uh, it was really minimalist. But one of those... 
side-scrolling platformers that really took you back to being a kid and playing video games, but was able to still feel uh, new enough, you know, still feel uh, relevant, you know, so... I, yeah, I, I was really happy to see during the uh, the video game awards. I, I looked at uh, all the nom nominees and stuff um, uh, right before we did this. Uh, Ori in the Blind Forest won best art direction. Nice, yeah. oh, great. I feel like it's that. Beautiful. Looking, yeah, yeah, that that definitely is well deserved. I really just had a blast playing it, and I I even played it uh, a second time through just because I wanted to go and be a completionist and get all the stuff that I missed the first time, just because it's so fun to play. Like, I knew what was mm -hmm. going to happen the second time through, the same thing that happened the first time, but it was just fun playing it. I mean, the mechanics of the game were just a blast to play. I really I really enjoyed. Or yeah, I think, the Blind Forest. I think I agree with you that that's a sign of a good game, is if you immediately want to play it again, that yeah. means it was good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, let's go on to most underrated game. The most underrated game of the year. Jasmine, let's go ahead and start with you this time. I'm gonna say Nom Nom Galaxy. Yeah? I did not get I did not see a lot of press for it when it first came out. Yeah. We started playing it. Well, like there a year ago. There still wasn't didn't we? a lot of press for it. <laughs> and uh we got a lot of you know, we you know, Q Games was like really happy we were playing it. We got a lot of like, you know, traction with that. But still, like it was one of those games that I just did not hear about. Now maybe it's because it's a Japanese game. You know, because it is a Japanese developer. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the reason why we haven't heard that much about it. It's because I, it could be the whole, you know, cross-continent. I, I threw up my arms because Jasmine stole my answer. That wasn't <laughs> my answer. <laughs> uh, and so, so that's one I will say, you know, we played it in early access like a year and a half ago. Yeah. And it finally released this year. Yeah. So the well, other part I think it might be part of it is that whole early access kind it, of thing where when that. a game launches... When, There's when, no when fanfare. This this question is accurate to the title. It's underrated. It got a sure. 68 on Metacritic. What? Okay. What? Yeah. This this game got horrible reviews. This game that we love. Um, its highest rated review on Metacritic is a 75. What? Most of them are in the 60s. That's um, insane. What are so people complaining about? Just that it gets samey after a while. Um, play it with friends they're probably playing it by themselves you know the, the, and the, I don't want to hijack the uh, topic but I do want to use that as a springboard into my go for it game which was Armello Armello is fantastic mm. exactly Armello is fantastic but uh, whereas Nom Nom Galaxy has a 70 Armello has, has a 74 a 74 what so yeah. again and the reason why is because the single player it's the single player. People said that when you were playing single player, you felt like sure. you were playing single player. Well, no, agree. Armello I mean, is we... a game that you have to play with friends. And I feel like Nom Nom Galaxy like, really benefits from playing who, with friends as who well. Who would play Armello single player? It's a board game. Who yeah, plays a board yeah. game alone? You know? Well, I well, think I mean... that that's what the appeal of it is. It's like, here's a board game for people who are lonely. <laughs> here's a board game for people who don't have somebody to play it with, you know, and, and in playing it, you feel, because we talked about it before we started playing mm -hmm. that when you play single player, you really feel like you're outmatched by the AI. That's true. You know? That's true. Uh, so like you're playing with really high skilled players Yep. Yep. and you feel like you're getting your ass kicked. For uh, sure. That's no fun. That's no fun. I agree. And so both of these games, I think that like, yeah, you're highlighting that they both benefit from multiplayer so much. And I'm, I'm shocked to hear that Nom Nom wasn't, reviewed well yeah. but like i mean i've been playing it for a year and a half so i don't think like <laughs> apparently i got bad taste <laughs> it, it, is, it is underrated for sure it, yeah. oh man well and now looking at metacritic mine is underrated as well i didn't realize it was low rated i just assume no one has really heard of it uh so my game that i thought was uh underrated is ink which is one that I played on the channel. Um, and it's from, you know, a developer up in Seattle. It's a very small game. Um, but, you know, it got featured, you know, Markiplier played it and a bunch of other big YouTubers played it. And so I think it did, but, you know, better than he expected. But still, it was a game that, you know, for the most part, I feel like um, flew under most people's radars just because it's, you know, didn't have a marketing budget, didn't have any kind of anything. It was just like, YouTubers spreading the news, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a ton of fun with it, but looking on Metacritic, it's got a 68. 
And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, for me, it was like, yeah, sure, it wasn't like the most original game. It was very much like a Super Meat Boy type game, a lot of people said. But I felt like the art and the um, the kind of the, me- the central mechanic of having to <laughs> reveal you and your blue, uh, having to reveal it. the map and everything like that. I, I loved it. I, I absolutely enjoyed the, the all the way through. And so, um, so, yeah, anyway, Inc., if you have like three or four bucks to spare, go pick it up on Steam. It's pretty cheap, I believe. And yeah, that, uh, it's a know, fun I, little experience. I feel like that's really the the thing with these indie games. I feel like sometimes the reviewers are a little bit too hard on them, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, in my bottom bits thing that I did last week, uh-huh. I played the uh, Game Corp DX, where yeah. you have to, you know, it's basically a game sim where you're like the game dev. And, uh, the less funds you have, the more likely you are to get a terrible score. Like, no matter how hard sure. you try to build a good game, you're going to get a bad score because you just don't have the money backing it, you right. know? Right, right. And I feel like uh, a lot of these indie games kind of suffer that. Uh, not to mention, you have to take into account how much did you pay for this game, you know? Yeah. That's another thing. Like, yeah. I, on, I'll play a game that's like 29 cents on bottom bids, and I'm like, yeah. okay, this game wasn't terrible. It wasn't great, but it was 29 right. cents. Right. So, Compare like, that to a really... $60 game. It's right. like, you know, that does, it should be a factor. It yeah, should I feel, be something. I feel like context is everything in yeah. these kind of things, you know? You don't look for a 60 hour epic for right. 29 cents. Right. Yeah. Right. Let's, let's not bite off more than we could chew here. Come on. Okay. Uh, we we were moving on to number four mm-hmm. top sleeper hit so, of the year. I think we can save some time on this one because I believe three of us have the exact same answer on this <laughs> one. Yep. Oh wow! Uh, so I'll start and say Downwell. Yep. Downwell. Yep. You yep. guys all said Downwell. Yep. I said Downwell. Yeah. And I'm actually surprised that I haven't heard anything from you about City Skylines yet, Ash. And uh, I say, uh, I, I, uh, City Skylines, uh, if we have a, t- a spot for honorable mentions, it's definitely on there. I don't think City Skylines fits any of the questions that I have on here. Yeah, really? I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's a sleeper hit because I think it's not like a it was, sleeper hit at all. Um, I think mean, people expected know. it to do well. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's a sleeper hit because it is a game that was made by an indie dev. Okay, sure. That yeah. didn't have a lot of backing behind uh, their marketing campaign or anything. Uh, and for that reason, I've included it on my sleeper hit because this is a game that came in the wake of SimCity 4. And this was the answer to SimCity 4. And it was a – how many people were on that uh, team? Like Thir- eight? Thirteen. Thirteen? Yeah. Still very yeah. small. Mm-hmm. And that's why I would say that this is uh, my pick for sleeper hit. And, and you know, it's, it's a small team. But, no, they, they did make a million dollars in their first launch. Like, yeah. They, yeah. they were all over Reddit. You know, people knew about it well before launch. So it's not that, like, it maybe didn't have a huge marketing budget. But people knew of it. Yeah. I think Danwell, well, even though I don't personally own Danwell, I haven't even played Danwell yet. I think Downwell fits the category super well because Downwell came out is of a game nowhere. that did better <laughs> after launch. Like, they mm-hmm. are now rapidly growing because people are now learning, holy crap, this $3 game actually has a lot of value to it. Um, well, and it's like, um, that's kind of like Isaac. You know, Isaac, exactly. when, when the first Isaac came out, that would have been considered a sleeper hit because it didn't actually hit its like big numbers for like six months or like, you know, nine months after launch. But I will say, Ricky, I think you're right that it is, I would call it um, Cities uh, sleeper hit in that I think that it definitely exceeded everyone's expectations for sales numbers. Like people thought it was going to be moderately popular. Like, okay, it's a good sim game for people who like Sims are going to play it. But I think you know, so many people bought it who are your standard AAA gamers that yeah. were like, I got to get me some City Skylines. That's pretty impressive to get those people building cities. So yeah, I, it definitely exceeded expectations. Uh, yeah, and uh, though the the technical definition of a sleeper hit does include like kind of gaining momentum over sure, time. Sure. It didn't check that box, but all mm-hmm. the other boxes, I feel like it did check. You know, and it was underfunded. It was there was no marketing budget behind it. You know, it was just sort of like it was a word of mouth success. And uh, uh, I, I don't think there were too many other games mm-hmm. this year that were able to do that outside yeah. of Downwell. I'd like to just honorable mention Warhammer Vermintide, um, just because I do feel like that was a game that, at least from us, like from our perspective, especially my perspective, and a lot of people that I know, I was blown away with what that game was when it came out. Like, I expected shitty rushed licensed trash, and it came out being an awesome version of Left 4 Dead I didn't know I wanted to play. I think that's it. That, that's justifiable <laughs> because most of the. Uh, um, Warhammer games are, 
Yeah, um, I mean, I've played a lot, a lot of, of Warhammer, Warhammer games, game. and a lot of them are bad. I've played a lot of the Dawn of War yeah. games. And this is coming from a guy rough. who loves Warhammer. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Downwell. <laughs> All right, well, Downwell sweeps it uh, from Stumped. And moving on to best movie. Okay, I want to hear go- Price's um, argument on this because we all chose the same movie. Yeah. Oh, so what? You Price think that objectively the- your movie is the best movie just so yes. because you guys all agree just on like it? Just like objectively, I Downwell was the I best game. Oh, 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 oh. We, we need to hear yet. answers first and then we'll make our arguments. So let, you let the viewers first. be informed first before we start screaming at each other. One, I haven't seen this movie yet. Two, okay. there was two movies that came out this year that's from uh, the same universe. I see, that's I see why I wanted to know why you chose this one over Fair enough. Fair enough, yeah. Well, you guys, I think you guys should go first because you all share the same opinion. Or do you want me to? I'll, I'll go first. Fine, I'll go you first. You go first. All we right. Just, <laughs> I, I picked Ant-Man. I picked Ant-Man. Uh, and for me, the reason that I picked Ant-Man and Jazz is saying over Avengers um, is because I felt like Ant-Man did kind of, f- for me, what the first Captain America did, where it's like, not only is it an awesome addition to the Marvel Universe, but it's also a really good movie on its own. And I think that Avengers Age of Ultron, you know, you need all that backstory if you want to really get what's going on in age of Ultron, like it, it, you at least need to have seen the first avengers you probably also need to have at least seen captain america winter soldier but really if you want to get everything in that movie you need to have seen like eight movies before walking into that theater um ant-man it's it's a good standalone movie it's uh you can see even though edgar wright didn't direct it you can see the edgar rightness in the writing like it's still very clever and funny uh there are a lot of great moments in it and i just i enjoyed it straight through and for a marvel movie it's actually kind of on the shorter side and that almost makes it better it's like a very tight experience you don't feel like it's a little overflowing like a lot of them you know when they hit that two hour and 20 mark sometimes they feel like they're a little bit big um i think this one came in like just at two hours or maybe even like an hour 50 minutes digestible Um, it's great. It's great. And so I just, I had a lot of fun watching that. And it's, it's one that I find myself <laughs> wanting to watch, um, again. Uh, whereas a lot of the Marvel movies, you know, it's like, yeah, I want to watch them again, maybe like a couple years down the road. Ant Man, like right after seeing it, I was like, I want to see it again. And I want to see it again now. And I want to watch it again now. That's so, how I felt about, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy is like that. Yeah. I'll admit that, uh, J- Jazz and I, we have not seen Ant Man yet. Uh, so I have not either. Check it out. But. I, I have seen uh, Age of Ultron, and I guess I was wasn't super impressed with. with that it felt movie. really long. What yeah. were we it's impressed with, guys? Yeah. Mad, Mad Max. Mad Max. Yeah. Mad Max Fury Road <clears throat> movie of the year. Great it movie. was the first movie. movie that blew me away and left me with the worst headache in my life because I was just so overwhelmed so, by everything that was happening. So visually stunning, really, is that movie in a nutshell. Mm. Like every also, every scene is painted. You know? mm-hmm. Every it, scene is painted and. They used practical effects well. Mm-hmm. Like For sure. The CGI in that movie, it was mostly the background. Yeah. All of the car explosions, all of that action that you're seeing, it's all practical effects, which is really, really cool to see these days. They could have easily just CGI'd it in, but they mm-hmm. didn't. They actually went with they, the practical effects, I, and I think it paid off. I see that there is a lot of CGI in that movie that you're not sure. seeing. Um, yeah. So but like, they did it well. They did it they, so They did it subtly. super well. So, like... um. You know the the explosion at the end with a tanker and those big cliffs. All of those cliffs are CG. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But they're using CG the way, in my opinion, you should. You yeah. should use CG to enhance a movie, right. not to make a movie. Right. Exactly. And yeah. they did so that like, really well. None of the characters are CG. I believe all of the cars are real as well. Um, but God's sakes, that that movie just does so much well with visuals, and it still tells a story which most visual movies. Don't. It's uh, not also just the visuals. It's also the, like the whole story about it. You actually have bad guys who you hate. You watch this movie and you just loathe, you know, Morton Joe. You loathe the guy from Bullet um, Town and the Gas <laughs> Town. Or these <laughs> guys are the guy with the flippy nips. Yeah. Yes. Nips. <laughs> I was like, how did you not notice the guy with the the freaking nipple rings? Uh, in the his first thing? time I saw it, I didn't notice the nipple rings. It was yeah. so And you know what's gross. crazy about Mad Max is, I mean, and Mad Max has always sort of been this movie mm-hmm. for yeah. anybody who's been a fan of Mad Max, <clears throat> but Mad Max is the avatar for us. Yes. He is a character that, yes. the movie isn't about Mad Max, even though it's called it's Mad Max. F- it's Furiosa. The movie is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's, it should be called Furiosa. And every Mad Max movie is this. It's, it's the guy who introduces you 
to this world, and now you are part of this world, and you're just sort of existing in it, you know? He had very little lines, you know? He wasn't really the big centerpiece of the movie, you know? He was just there to show you the world and navigate you through it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think o- the only Mad Max movie that's about Mad Max is the first Mad Max. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like Road Warrior is very similar to Fury Road, where, you know, he goes into that little area, and he's like protecting the gasoline and all that stuff. Thunderdome, it's all about, what is this Thunderdome, barter town bullshit? Uh, and then Fury Road, it's all about Furiosa and all that, and so it's Fun like, yeah. Fact about the very first Mad Max when it was released in the United States, the uh, distributor thought that they wouldn't be able to understand the Australian accent, and they actually dubbed an American over Mel Gibson. Oh, oh boy! Yep. No way! <laughs> yep, that's yep. funny. <laughs> oh man! Oh, but yeah, it's a great movie. It was I- fantastic. I will say, Jasmine, I think you mentioned earlier, like when you were saying that you, like it was like overwhelming, like you felt like tired after seeing so exhausted. I was overwhelmed yeah. the first time I watched it. And I I, say, I, I'm actually really surprised that you liked it so much. Not that there was necessarily a lot of gore, but I feel like there was a lot of violence. And I sure. feel like it was just such an action-y movie. And I know that you don't really go in for the gore kind of stuff. Uh, you know, action is fine. But once they start like, like people are starting to be torn apart. There's excessive, long, drawn-out scenes of people getting tortured or, like, just a lot of, like, disgusting gore. That's gross. If that's it happens really quick and it's done, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I can deal with that. Yeah, it wasn't really gratuitous in Mad Max. No. Um, I will say... Uh, learn Jasmine's limit. But Don't I think that it. what I want to say is that, like, no film has ever... Uh, fully realized the statement nonstop action thrill ride <laughs> then, it really uh, is Mad it Max was Fury one ride. long That's car true. chase scene. I, I remember like <laughs> i i had to pee for like an hour in that movie and could not find a time to where like stuff had stopped where i was like i can step away for a second you know i will say <laughs> say what you will about quentin tarantino but i'm really looking forward to the hateful eight and sure. i really love that he's putting an intermission in it that's what intermissions are for you're gonna go you're gonna refill your popcorn you're gonna go relieve yourself intermission is in uh, the hateful eight, I every movie needs to bring back an intermission. I well, love it's it. also because it's going to be like three hours long. The only time I've seen an long. intermission in a movie was Titanic. Yeah, did that Titanic was like a long fucking movie. Oh, did Titanic oh, yeah. have an intermission? It had when I watched it. Yeah, wow, it was awesome. Yeah. It was like da 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 da. You go and you do your thing. All right, and you come back. We're moving on from uh, best movie to best TV series. What was? The TV series that had you guys enraptured all year. Rick, I think you need to start this time. Yeah? Yeah. I uh, picked Mr. Robot. Oh, that's okay. a great answer. Mr. Robot. Uh, this this show was not only compelling, but it had so many similarities to Fight Club from mm. the get-go, from the get-go, that I was like, this is just a Fight Club clone. And it kind of is. And the great thing about the show is that I don't care that it is. <laughs> like, its storyline is so great and stands on its own so well that I I cannot wait for the second season. Uh, Rami Malek is so good in it. Also, Killed Christian it. Slater making a comeback in this yeah. show. Lastly, it's on USA Network, which has not been known to be – uh, this daring in any of the TV shows that it makes. It right. usually makes pretty conventional shows. Uh, and the SVU? fact that it's going to go out on a limb and make a show as daring and as original as Mr. Robot, I think it's re- like this is the lifesaver for the USA Network. Monday Night Raw, man. Come on. Oh, yes. come on. <laughs> uh, I also how how say long has this... the WWE been around? I don't want to. Come on. This is an I'll, established I'll say franchise. I'll this about Mr. Robot as well. It has some of the most original cinematography of a TV show hmm. ever. Um mm-hmm. Like their their shots, there's there's always if you take any cinematography class, they talk about the grids that you need to have your character stay in. This show doesn't follow that fucking shit at all. They they have a character way down here in the corner for the frame of the shot. They have a character just way off to the side over here for the shot. No, it's amazing. I love it. Yeah, I I, I really loved Mr. Robot. I can't wait until uh, the next season. It's gonna be great. And the last episode. <laughs> it there was this stinger at the end that was like three minutes long and you're just like oh god it's gonna be so good it's going to be so good yes. uh, I would say if I had to give an honorable mention I would say The Leftovers but that was a show that came out two years ago but the second season I thought was very great but my vote goes to Mr. Robot right on fair enough I still need to watch that one right on who's right next on. Price 
Sure. Uh, so my my vote goes to Jessica Jones. I think Jessica Jones was fantastic. It exceeded my expectations um, for what I thought it was going to be because uh, I felt like Jessica Jones is a character that not a lot of people know, and so it's not going to have that kind of push that Daredevil has. I feel like Daredevil had. We all knew who Daredevil was to some degree, so you knew. All right, the martial arts. All right, the he can see all that. You know. Uh, whereas Jessica Jones, you go into it like you don't know who Jessica Jones is. And so uh, I feel like they did such a good job of um, maintaining a steady pace throughout it to where I feel like once you get past the first episode, every episode is good from then on through. Like you just you just want to keep watching. And I will just go ahead and say my dad out of nowhere marathon the crap out of Jessica Jones. Like I didn't even tell him to because I was like, this dude doesn't like superheroes. He wants nothing to do with this. And he just randomly like yesterday I was at my, at my, my parents' house and he was like, hey, Price, you know, I, I checked out that uh, that Marvel, the Jessica Jones, uh, and it was really good. And I was like, what? This is amazing. We could bond over this, man. <laughs> so the fact that my dad enjoyed it, I feel like that's a pretty damn resounding thing that like this is not just something for superhero nerds like me. Normal people like Jessica Jones. Not normal people like Radical Man 56. Did he not like it on Metacritic? The only person on Metacritic to give it a zero. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't even want to know what he has to say because I'm sure it's just garbage. Oh, my God. Uh, I'll, I'll just... Leave it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one uh, one snippet from the Let's review. She's a beautiful white woman with extraordinary talent, but has a rather drunken, violent sex hookup with a black bartender she just met who might be a stalker. Apparently, white girl, black guy is the new hip trend in American TV. Oh, oh God. my God. He ends it with, I'll pass on the next episode. All right, even, so there you uh, go. Just even though Jessica Jones and Luke Cage have had a relationship in the comics since like the 80s, but that's fine. No, that's fine. Radical no, Man 56. They invented it for TV. Oh, it's just, it was just no. for the TV show. Radical Radical Valid criticism, spoken, you racist. It's not going to get picked up for a second season. Okay? No, damn it. <laughs> um, it actually probably won't, though, which is yeah. sad. Well, you know, but they that, tied it up in a nice bow. Well, and, and the thing is, like, Luke Cage comes out this time next year, so I feel like Luke Cage is really kind of like the second yeah. season to Jessica Jones, and then, you know, they'll, they'll kind of do the back and forth thing for a while. So, uh, I just recently finished Jessica Jones. I really yeah. liked it. I have some qualms with it as well. Fair but enough. what was your pick? My pick is Daredevil, for sure. Daredevil. Wow. All I right. I forgot that came out this year. Did that actually yeah. come out this year? It, it did. did. It came out in February. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, See, I... I Everything's blown. I can't. Come on, Marvel man, know your shit. I, yeah. I could have sworn it was like April, but I thought it was like April of last year. But it was yeah. this year. It was this no. year. Uh, That's right, because it was right before Avengers. Jesus. Yeah. So maybe I changed April, my mind. It's Daredevil. I like Daredevil it's, it's more. Daredevil. <laughs> Daredevil's so good. Um, so, first of all, I, I keep on talking about the cinematography. The cinematography of this show is fucking is incredible, uh, Dude. especially the hallway fight scene. Hallway uh, fight scene. Uh, I knew you were going to talk about that. Uh, Everyone you is. can't not talk about that. But also, just like the entire flow of the show really makes you want to watch it over and over and yep. over. Um, yep. And fucking uh, Vincent D'Onofrio is just oh, he's that, yeah, as uh, good. Yeah, he's just so good. Um, yeah, he anyway. needs more work. Daredevil. Great show. Great show. Jasmine. Uh, I picked I Zombie. I know I don't even know when it came out. Honestly, I liked it. It's well, the second season came year. out this year, so yep. yep, It's new to me this year. I still need to finish the first season. I every time I try to wa- uh, sit down and watch Netflix, I try to watch it. It's just such a good show. It's great. It's oh, a it's fun so good. Show. It's so good. It's so fun, and it's it just is one of those things. It's one of those shows that like hits every button for me. Mm-hmm. It's you know it's kind of has that progressive feeling. You get like these really quirky characters. It's also just like the whole kind of like tongue in cheek kind of appeal. You know, she's a zombie. She's a mortician. You know, she also solves crime. It's amazing. <laughs> I like it. For Ash me, doesn't it's, like it. it, it I zombie is. Jasmine uh, just loves corny stuff. I just it, it's almost dude. like it. Uh. Dude, <gasps> corny stuff. I love oh it. my god! Corny there's stuff. The, I, I gotta this. watch the new episode. It's it's Veronica Mars meets Pushing Daisies, which are two I of my favorite Pushing shows. Daisies. And I, I feel love like Pushing Daisies. It's like yeah. it has the like supernatural, paranormal, like kind of over the edge stuff that Pushing Daisies yeah. had, and then it's got that like you know um, solving a crime kind of deal where, but you like each episode is a different crime, but you also have the overarching theme for this season. So which it's like very, Pushing Daisies. You guys like Pushing Daisies, but <laughs> the but new Rob episode, Thomas, which I haven't seen yet. Yeah, it it's called Cape Town. And Liv is a superhero. Yes. yes. Oh my god, I can't <laughs> wait to watch it. Ash is the only one that's just like, just stop, sorry, bro. Just stop. Sorry, bro. Oh. <laughs> Zombies great. And I'm okay for uh, you and me, Price, because mm-hmm. apparently Ash is out of the loop. Uh, 
Rose MacGyver, totally hotter as a zombie, right? I oh. I dig zombie Rose MacGyver <laughs> with, way with, more like, the than I do. hair and the yeah, like light yeah. skin. Yeah, like I I've seen her on talk shows and like uh, it's not just the Australian accent that throws me off. I, something about that that blonde haired. I mean, don't pale don't get me zombie. don't get me started on this stuff. All right, I'm get myself <laughs> into trouble. <laughs> I dig Australian right. accents. So right Rick, there. Rick, what's your favorite show? Uh, I already said it. Mr. Robot. Oh, I Robot. Robot. Right, right, or Mr. Right, Robot. We've already gone full circle. We've gone full circle. So I still haven't watched Mr. Robot. I will definitely have to check it out. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And Ash, you're going to have to get on board with the iZombie train. It's apparently. so good, dude. It's so good. Okay. So, uh, Jazz? We're, 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 oh, we're Jazz around the corner here. Last thing. Oh. I think we need an intermission. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you have to use the bathroom? I'm out. Rick, you gotta put up like okay. While well, Jasmine goes and walks away, Rick, you gotta put up like a little like. We're back, and we're talking uh, biggest disappointment of the year. All right, this is a good one. This is a good one. This mm-hmm. is a good one. All right, and I will say that Jazz and I picked one that uh, due to some bad info that I had from a site that was listing games that came out this year. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go ahead and pick one on a whim. Y- y'all, y'all think of that, and Ash and I can go. I'll go ahead and yeah. start. Meanwhile, yes, Ash yeah. and ja- or Ash and Price are gonna let us know what their biggest disappointments were. S- so my go biggest disappointment, and I have an asterisk next to this because I haven't actually played it because of my disappointment that surrounds it, is uh, Batman: Arkham Knight, which uh, Arkham City. Good one. Arkham City is one of. I mean, that's one of the best games of the past decade, as far as especially like taking a superhero property and turning it into a game that everyone wants to play. Well done. And Arkham Knight was so um, kind of anticipated. It was actually being done by Rocksteady instead of the people who did Batman Origins. So like it, it had everything going for it. And the PC port was so rushed and such garbage that they ended up having to actually pull it from Steam, give people refunds. Uh, you couldn't get, like, they took it off the store and you couldn't buy it for another, like, several months. And mm-hmm. apparently that patch didn't even actually fix most of the bugs. Yeah. Um, and just, like, all of the bugs within there. It's like, the game itself, I watched a couple playthroughs of people who had it on, like, PS4 and stuff like that, and it looked really great. Um, Story-wise, it didn't I quite... I haven't watched anything, but I've uh-huh. heard that, like, Mark Hamill's performance in it is, like, amazing. It's great. Yeah, it's great. Um, a lot of the story beats that they hit are pretty awesome. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like that they they incorporate some killing joke stuff in there, which a lot of people, anything killing joke related, they just go like, ah, worst. Which for me, I'm like, all right, get over it. All right, I get it, killing joke, but also all the Red Hood stuff is in there and stuff as well. So deal with it. Um, so I really wanted to play that game. I really, really wanted to. I was so excited, and I couldn't. Because the Steam version was so bugged, and yeah. by the time it was apparently fixed, uh, you know it already passed. You know now I don't want to play it. It's it's too late, yeah. and uh, yeah. So that's my d- biggest disappointment. So I found one. I just yeah. want to throw it in there just before Ash says anything because that ahead. might be it. Hmm? I am really really disappointed in PT, only because oh, the, the uh, how yeah. it messed up. It you know it was announced around I think February. That it was canceled. Can we just That's say really just disappointing? We're disappointed in Konami. Can That's, we just say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, honestly, the category was biggest disappointment, and, and like, Konami that is a definitely. No, yeah, Konami's no, and, though is the disappointment. You know, but, but PT though, is yeah. Even though I could not stomach when we played it. Mm-hmm. And I'm so happy we never released it because, oh, God, that's really hard to watch. We did record some of it, and we did not release it because of Jasmine's reaction to that game. Jasmine was losing it. It seemed like she we was... were torturing her. Yeah, like it was it lo- torture. I yeah. It's something bad. about watching a game mm. and knowing what's going to happen that kind of freaked me out about it. Like when, um, when I watched it blind, when I watched other YouTubers play it, I, for some reason, was fine. But knowing what was going to happen and playing that, that kind of like just threw me for a loop. It was really sorry about that. But I, I, I kind of wanted to like see what was going to happen because they got you know, um, what's Norman that Reedus. um really big uh, horror manga Guillermo del Toro. Oh, Guillermo oh, del Toro. Oh, but the manga like, guy, Junji Ito. Junji Ito, 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 yeah. His stuff is amazing. Yeah. Like that's like kind of like a glizzly pleasure that I read. Like I read. It wasn't like stuff. Norman Reedus attached to it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he was yeah. the yeah. main character. Like, there was just so many big names attached to that project. To that. That's really disappointing to me that it never. I feel. I feel like become. if there were ever a time for Kickstarter to really uh, pull its weight, it is right now. You know, like 
we just watched uh, MST3K break Kickstarter uh, uh, goals. Records, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. I mean, they raised like 6.3 million, yeah. you know? Like, people are willing to give their money to something that they really believe in. And honestly, I feel like if Guillermo del Toro and Hideo Kojima brought something great to the table, and obviously they've already got the PT concept, you know, as like proof of concept, they could rake it in. They could at least get $10 million to get it started and then get somebody, some publisher to invest in them. I could easily see, though, Konami having the kinds of contracts because they're such slimy monsters that it's like, not only do we own Silent Hill and anything attached to Silent Hill, but we own you making games for the next five years so you can't do anything. They they don't, though. That's the thing is, uh, I'll, uh, I'll... Hideo Kojima pull up. is on a, uh, a, a, non, a non-compete thing, but mm-hmm. it ends sometime next year. No, uh, it ended this year. Or did I'm it almost this positive year? it ended this year because I remember reading about it when it ended. They, okay. There was a non-disclosure, but mm. uh, it, it's up. I'm almost I positive it's up. I think that non-disclosure no, continued it's, on until the it, video it, game awards. It's the non-compete thing, though. Non-compete, like, yeah. So yeah. He, he can't even work on any games, and it's. I don't think it's up yet because I think that's part of why he couldn't attend the game awards. And there was that awesome movie and announcement of the uh, the guy saying it Konami is being monsters and they aren't yep. allowing him. December to... expires in December. It just okay. So yeah, but that is why he couldn't go to yeah. the game awards right. because of that non compete thing for some reason. Stupid. Well, but, but I mean, it expires it... in December. So hopefully, first quarter we'll see a Kickstarter Hideo Kojima Gamma del Toro, and then we will get the PT that we so justly deserve. I'm gonna doubt it. I could, I definitely could see Hideo Kojima doing a Kickstarter for something. I don't think Guillermo is going to yeah. set his time aside for something that's not guaranteed because that dude's booked out for the next yeah. decade. Especially when that guy already has big projects that apparently aren't guaranteed. Either. And he needs to work on Hellboy 3, and I don't care whatever else he wants to work on because he needs to make a goddamn Hellboy 3. Hellboy God, 3 is not going to be a thing, and I feel like Hellboy 3 is one of those things, like Firefly, that you're going to have to depend on a Kickstarter in order I, to actually see to fruition. I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I want, I want to see a Hellboy 3, but Guillermo del Toro is such a fanboy that I feel like he would throw his weight behind a Kickstarter. Sure. Rick, sure. what's yeah. your biggest disappointment of the year? Oh, my biggest disappointment. You know, uh... I can go with mine if you're not ready yet. No, uh... I think my biggest disappointment of the year is probably, and this is going to sound really stupid, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. <laughs> oh, no, that, I totally agree, man. I loved the Tony Hawk Is that games. yours too, Ash? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I loved the, not only Tony Hawk 1, 2, and 3. Number two, man. Me and my friends right got so much playability out of. We would all sit around playing. The, we'd pass the controller around. So much nostalgia goes into this game. But... Uh, I mean, I, w- I grew up like the punk rock kid who was into skateboarding and stuff, you know. Uh, Skate 1 and 2, I really loved those games. Those were really great skateboarding games. I really wanted a new skateboarding game that would, you know, kind of take it to the next level, take it to the next generation. And I was really hoping that Tony Hawk would bring it, but he didn't. I think this you're going to have to settle for Goat Simulator, man. This game's <laughs> garbage, you know. I mean, like, like Skate... Skate is a good game. Skate 2 is a good game. Skate 3 is a good game. Like, why can they not figure this out? Why can they not it, fucking just... It, it seems like there were so many bugs at release. They must have... I, I don't even understand why they rushed it, but good lord. Like, it's just unplayable. Yeah. Sometimes I think what happens is that with these studios, with these massive like franchise type things that are kind of going a little bit off the rails, I think they just use them as like training simulations for like their new people like they take all the creative people because creative people don't want to work on tony hawk's pro skater 5 right the creative work has already been done on tony hawk's pro skater you're just iterating right so all the creatives they want to go somewhere else and work on their own projects all the veterans they want to go work on something new and so what you do is you bring in all the new people who you're like okay you're going to be working up the ranks over here uh, at this studio under activision we're going to make you work on this piece of trash you got to get it out in about a month so that you can go work on something that actually matters okay Break. <laughs> Ridiculous. Cool. Yeah, that, that, that game uh, was a mess, and uh, there, there will never be another good Tony Hawk. It yep. just won't Probably happen. Not. They Probably need not. to yep. just hang it up. Yep. Ash? Yep. How old is Tony Hawk nowadays? Uh, Tony Hawk? The Sorry. actual guy? Yeah. I don't know. Ash, 50? you tell us what your, your thing is, and I'm going to look up Tony Hawk's age. <laughs> my, my thing is not game-related, okay? Mm. 47 years old. 
Uh, that was close. Wow. It was big, the, the question was biggest disappointment, so I, yeah. I picked my biggest, biggest disappointment for the year. House of Cards Season 3. Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah, I never even finished it. It was just trash. Yeah. yeah. It was just bad. Yeah. It just it it, lost its steam. You know? it, ch- it changed everything about what we liked about the characters of the show, and it didn't even finish good. You know? Well, and and you know, I think it's another good example of like oftentimes writers have a good idea, and then they're asked to continue. Yeah, because when Fincher and the whole team behind House of Cards, you know, Kevin Spacey, everybody signed on to it, they made sure with Netflix are like two season deal. You yeah. have to give us two seasons, and those first two seasons of House of Cards, Absolutely. some of the best television I've ever seen. Just fan. I started to lose interest after like halfway through the second season. I really oh, did. Lose. You make it all the way through? I'll say that the the first two seasons, both of them had a concept to like they had a place that they thought you, they were taking you, and then mm. they twisted at the end. Yeah, yeah. they both yeah. had a twist. Um, yeah. This one, spoilers. Season three does not have a twist, and. <laughs> It's like everything that you loved about Kevin Spacey's character, about him being, you know, a badass, someone that doesn't take shit, someone that has an obvious goal, but you don't quite know how he's going to get to that goal. No, he's just he's literally crying in the first couple episodes because he can't figure out what to do. That's not his character. No, it's not. Like you would think that would be part of a twist, right? Right. Like he's throwing the viewer off or something. I mean, you know, not to spoil the first two seasons too much, but I mean, that's kind of like the whole like draw about those seasons is like he's trying to climb the ladder. Right. Where do you go when the dude's at the top of the ladder? Right. He can't climb anymore. You go to space. You go to space. <laughs> you the fucking moon president. I'm the unless, president of the moon. Unless it ends with him becoming dictator of Earth, I don't think <laughs> it's uh, going to work out. So, yeah. um but no, yeah, I mean, uh, again, spoilers, um, but I thought that the whole twist of the third season was going to be uh, his wife trying to actually usurp him and become mm. the president herself, because that's really where I thought that dynamic was going. Is there a uh, law that says the first lady became president? <laughs> <laughs> like, She'll run uh, against him, I think. There, there's a par- She'll make it happen. I mean, if Kevin Spacey can somehow convince the vice president to just fucking retire so that he can become it then i figure anything's possible in that show yeah fair Um, enough fair enough uh i I just want to say that uh when i looked up tony hawk's age (laughs) uh google just brought up the age of like all of the popular skateboarders from uh and uh some surprises there's like (laughs) bam margera is 36 years old dude looks like shit no. Oh my god! <laughs> this guy looks are like we, he's. Is this just gonna turn into skateboarder? No, uh, no, no. I, I just wanted to say, like, I'm looking at like some of these skateboarders. They've like they've kept in shape. Like they look good, you know. Like uh, you you've got like Rodney Mullins who's 50. You've got like Steve Cavallaro who's 51. You know these guys. They look spry. They look good. Bam Margera. Oh my god! <laughs> you are not doing well, my friend. Damn, Bam. Apparently mm-hmm. pranking your dad all day long. And is Rob Deirdrick is Mexican. 41. Who knew? That guy's fucking old as shit. <laughs> I'm looking at pictures. It looks like he got his ass handed to Damn, him. Damn, son. Right? On your, remind me on your 41st birthday to tell you, you're old as shit, man. Hey, man, I'm, I'm down. Anything over 40 is fair game. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so we're going on to best supporting game character. I don't know why this didn't come after best yeah, leading game no character. No idea but why that happened. Here it is, number eight. Who's the best supporting game character of 2015? I'll go ahead and start because mine's not... Uh, I can't say much about the character. Um, <clears throat> and I, I'm even using a second name for the character because naming the character is almost a spoiler in itself. But from StarCraft II, the character Talendar is awesome. Uh, and I guess the only thing I can really say about him that is... Um, doesn't reveal too much. He's the first of the purifiers that you come across. And the purifiers are an ancient Protoss weapon that was created where essentially they tried to replicate the um, brains, like the brain waves, the patterns of um, f- like famous high executor uh, Protoss so that they could download those into robot bodies that could then be their like major force. And they're called the purifiers because they were essentially sent to planets to just purge them of all life uh and so he's this character that you get and um i don't want to spoil anything about him but like the the dynamic that you have between him and as he's like understanding what it means to like he feels like he's alive but he's so not. the dynamic between artanus artanus and, Tal- yeah. Art- and talendar yeah i've never played starcraft that's all right it's all right it sounds like um 
Basketron. It is. Coming. He's a lot like Basketron. And uh, he's learning to love, and he's understanding that there's more to life than basketball. <laughs> it's like it's like if he was programmed not for basketball, basketball is life, but to yes. rip Zerg to pieces. Like that's that's. <laughs> and then he's of understanding he that the Zergs have feelings yeah. too. <laughs> and is that love? And then his is heart it? grew three sizes that day. <laughs> My hardcore matrix has become larger. <laughs> Jazz, what what's your game? favorite character? My favorite supporting character is the best supporting character. It's dog meat. That's a bold statement. That dog He's great. never judges you when you steal from a person. He never yeah. judges you when you kill a person because you want their shit. He just loves you unconditionally like any good dog would. It's dog meat. I upgraded the crap out of my dog meat so he'll like because, knock people down and everything. Yeah. It's awesome. Because like when I'm with Yeah, Nick, but you got that lone survivor perk, didn't you? No, I didn't. No, no price. Oh, yeah. Which Which was you get lone that lone survivor? survivor perk? Well, no, what's that? No, no, I didn't get that. I didn't get that. Oh, lone, lone survivor is where you get a bonus for not having a companion, but yeah, I no. guess that dog meat I want doesn't the dog. count because he's a dog. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't count? I don't think so. No, oh, well, then I will get that perk. Yeah. Well, all the right. thing about like, okay, so all the other characters, no matter what you do, they're always disappointed in what you do. Mm. It doesn't no, matter. That's not true. That's true. That is not true. Well, every time I'm like, okay, not no Nick, matter what you do. No, I'm like, okay, no matter Nick, when you do certain things. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like, even if I'm sneaking around and taking shit, all, taking shit, all of a sudden it's like, I'm disappointed in you. I'm like, God damn it, Nick. Why no, are you that, trying, that, to I'm steal, trying to steal, Jack? I, trust here. I do think that's the fucked up about that game. A game that is basically a pick up shit simulator. <laughs> they all say. You're never going to use this one. Obviously, you will because that's the whole point of the game is to break no, shit down. No, you're wrong. And, build... and I'm going to tell you why you're wrong because I'm going to go into my favorite supporting character. And even though my supporting character would yell at me if I stole stuff, my favorite supporting character is Piper from Fallout 4 <laughs> because I'm trying so hard to put a ring on it. <laughs> Piper, we're gonna get she married. She might listen to the podcast. She you might listen sure to this podcast. Yeah. Piper, yeah. You're, you turn keep trying to with... flirt with me. My flirt attempts keep failing. I, I need to get more charisma because I don't have a lot of it. But what I'm gonna say is the companion that I was a runner up is Kate. But Kate is too much of a junkie for me to want to put a ring on her. Uh, Kate. <laughs> When you do stim, she's like, yeah. Like, <laughs> you're like pumping buff out. You're pumping like psycho. She's like, yeah, pump that. <laughs> Woo! Let's get crazy together. Uh, if you steal stuff, Kate's like, yeah, I don't care if you steal stuff. Piper keeps me grounded. She's mm. like, okay, I don't like you stealing stuff, but I love it when you pick locks. Oh, I love it when you pick those. Pick them. Oh, no, pick Nick's the locks. same way. Nick does not mind me picking <sighs> locks. Also, he Does he like the, it though? Does he like it? No, he, he enjoys it. He's like, Piper man, loves you are really good at that doing shit. that. But Piper's he's like, also yes. the one character that will allow me to get through any advanced hacking thing. I could be like, hey, uh. robot, robot, <laughs> go do it. <laughs> <laughs> robot, do your robot biz. Robot. But if I wanted to put a ring on it, it had to be strong because that dude, I love him. Strong doesn't I, shut the fuck up. That guy just he keeps talking. Rick, you might us. you might be going about this the wrong way, trying to put a ring on it. When instead, you should get some kind of commemorative lock. All right, <laughs> a little heart shaped lock <laughs> that you have the lock pick to. All That's, right. Yeah. Okay. You got it. Maybe that'll impress her. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a romantic. What can I say? All I'm going to tell you is that Mel is very jealous of Piper. <laughs> she hears me talking about her. I'm I'm telling her that she's really into she's me. she's behind that screen just scowling. <laughs> just she's, she's, oh, she's, she's, Piper, that son of a bitch. If Oculus Rip were a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my favorite game character, supporting game character, Josh from Until Dawn. Oh, oh also okay. played by Remy Malik. Um, yeah, yeah, that that guy really made that game. To be to be honest to me, yeah, he um, did. I mean, there was there was a lot of great characters in that game. Literally every character in that game is a supporting character. There is no mm -hmm. main character. That yeah, game. yeah. Um, but no, yeah, Remy Malik, awesome. Awesome. Uh, he really, I think, did uh, the best performance in that game. So Good call. Good Are you call. sure it's not the Nihilist? Because he not was pretty good, too. No. I, I will say, uh, just Until Dawn in general, that uh, was yeah. a real surprise. I yeah. didn't expect I it to be as good as it was. I that, wanted yeah. it to be good, but I didn't expect it to be good, and it ended up being good. Yeah. yeah. I'm Very surprised good. I sat yeah. through it, because that, <laughs> that was more well. surprising to me. <laughs> I <laughs> liked it. I, I quite enjoyed it. There are a couple All right, scenes guys, we're at the home stretch now. Two really easy categories. Okay, let's do it. Number let's nine, it. best stumped moment of 2015. I think we're all in agreement in at least one moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think PAX. so. 
Pax yeah, was, which was great. Really like four yeah. day, like a four day moment. But yeah, yeah. it was a, that. That's my moment as well. Yeah. 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 Pax was definitely the defining moment. Oh, I loved it. I can't wait until next year's Pax. Yeah. It's going to be absolutely. It's I think gonna be even better. It's one of those things where I think that Pax really, you know, was one of the first times where I really felt like we were like professionally doing this. You know, yeah. it's like we we've, we've been doing this for <laughs> almost two years now, um, but like going to Pax like as a group and like meeting a bunch of developers and talking to them about the channel and kind of interact, like it was a really because fun it, thing to do exactly like that's that was my favorite thing about PAX is like actually not even just like because when we met John Brown from from mm-hmm. Bone Loaf and stuff mm-hmm. um, like obviously when he heard oh we're stumped he freaked out and that was great that was a great moment yeah but my favorite part was actually meeting developers that had never heard of SMB mm-hmm. like we run a YouTube channel that focuses on four player multi uh, local co op stuff and seeing their eyes light up and just realizing we're doing something that like even devs understand is like we we're filling a niche you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I think yeah, looking at our great. underrated games, you know, knowing that like we have this weird skewed view on the market, I guess. <laughs> and like, we really like these multiplayer games that apparently other people just don't like. Well, like yeah. when I'm we sat down with the devs for... of uh, Stories, that's yeah. when I that felt was a lot like, of fun. Yeah. Stories like is we, be great. we 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 were literally were behind the scenes. Like they mm-hmm. brought us behind and showed us the secret TV where they showed us the game oh, that yeah. they weren't showing anybody else, and we're like, wow, we really are now we, behind. We the knew scenes. all about their previous tiny game tiny yeah. brains tiny game. brains so yeah. good so good yeah it was also just nice to be in a, like an environment where you're just like i've come and i'm with my people yes. yeah i am with <laughs> people that are like-minded this <clears throat> cosplay is amazing and i love it and just being able to just kind of go out and just do things and, and then be completely blown away by like meeting tim schaefer that blew me away yeah. i've never met like a famous person before Speaking i am of jealous meeting. because my mom constantly she's met jeff goldblum <laughs> I want that. <laughs> we didn't just, I mean, you guys got his autograph and stuff at PAX. We went to an after party with the motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. We just got, we're on the dance floor with him. Yeah. I like, he, he complimented me on my bear hoodie. Yeah. It was we, awesome. we've, we've got that group picture of everybody that was at the after party. Well, I'll mm-hmm. post it probably, hopefully, right Over there. there yeah. It's, yeah. It's very cool. Uh, but speaking of meetups, we had a meetup in that, Seattle. That was great. And, yeah, it was great. We had. Quite a few people show up, more than I was expecting. I was thinking maybe at most one or two, yeah. you know. But there were four of you guys that really stuck around with us and played games with us. No, I mean, we had some that. people trickle in yeah, and out, but yeah, you know, people cycle through around. a bunch yeah, of people. Yeah, it was great. You know, I mean, people actually showed up, and for this YouTube channel that's only been around for at this point a year and a half, for you guys to come out and hang out with us uh, was really, really cool. We hung out at GameWorks, and uh, that was, I mean, honestly, why we do this. Uh, because we want to make a living out of it, obviously, which we never thought we would be able to. But <laughs> the fact that we have fans that come to GameWorks in Seattle to meet us was so flattering. And it's the reason why we do this. It's the reason Dude. why we have stumped yeah. as it is. It's it was so humbling. Like when, when, like when, I think I was the first person to go to GameWorks. And uh, I think it was like Brenner and John Cotto were there. <laughs> and like yeah. I just remember like like seeing them. And they were like, Bryce! And I was like, hey! And like I ran up like hugged them and everything. I was like so excited because it was like... There are people that actually watch our stuff. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know this. <laughs> it's, I felt it's, so bad yeah. because me and Ash were rushing it. I think we all, me, you know, Rick and Ash were rushing it, and we were just hot as hell. <laughs> that was no, just sure. like, oh, sure. we were like booking it to the game works. We yeah, were definitely booking right. it, and I was just like, oh, in August. I'm sorry, like the hottest... I feel so bad because yeah. I want to like be excited, but at the same time, I'm like, I feel gross. <laughs> But it, I ended up it, playing was, DDR, it was such which a was the blast, worst thing I've ever man. done. <laughs> and it was a ton I, of fun. Yeah. I mean, everybody can agree that. Oh my god! Like it was. Great. It's you guys, it, the fans, are what make our day. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I didn't include it on my list, but I should have. One of my favorite parts of the year, as stumped, was the fan mail. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you know? oh, yeah, yeah. The the stuff that you guys have sent the us box, has yeah. been so great, you know, like the fan art that you've sent us, the the gummy bears. <laughs> the gummy bear, the gigantic gummy bear, the the the, the little uh, characters, the yeah. little gang beast characters that you've sent us. So, so cute. <laughs> you guys should see Honestly, it cute. touches us so like when we see it our hearts melt. Yep. And yep. you guys honestly I are what keep us doing this. I mean, if we could make a million dollars and not have the support of you guys, it wouldn't be worth it. You guys are the best. Honestly, more. that has been the best part of Stumped for me this year. <laughs> 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 Alice. Alice, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, Alice, 
Y- yeah, she's great a stuff. Artist. She's great a stuff. Artist. Yeah. Follow us on Twitter. You'll see all the the fan art. So we also had a couple moments that we all liked from like just like stumped videos that we made throughout the year. Oh yeah. So yeah. like my favorite, and it's in the uh, it's in our trailer. And I think a lot of these are in there because we like them so much. <laughs> but like my my favorite was when we played um, Counter Spy. Yeah. And for some reason we started talking about bees. <laughs> and so it's like, are those bullets or bees? <laughs> and then and then Jasmine's like, I think they're bees. And then Rick's like, they're Africanized. It was one of those moments that like just sprang out of nowhere. And whenever we we are able to go off on a silly tangent like that and carry yeah. it out. Oh, I have so much fun. I just yeah. I can't, it was that Gomer can't Piles it. voice that really yeah. <laughs> no, drove it in. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Oh, oh bullets and bees was great, and uh, we we had a lot of good pulls from uh, our playthrough of Magicka too, which I actually mm. wanted to include on our list of games that were unrecognized and stuff. Sure. But there were some yeah. other things to beat it out. Magicka two was a blast. I had a lot of fun uh, with that one. But uh, the butt death does a lot. <laughs> <laughs> butt death does a lot. And Surprender, like we, Surprender. Surprender has gotten some mileage. Like we, we Surprender is Surprender. part yeah. of the stumped uh, vernacular now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Surprender. Um, oh man. I want to to mention uh, uh, the Kerbal Space Program playthrough. Mm. That oh, I don't, you stole mine. I I had uh, I had no. Did I? I? I didn't read the thing, so I don't know. <laughs> ah. um, Kerbal but, Space Program and I had no expectation of us actually succeeding. No. We mm-hmm. did. Yep. Um, and then we killed ourselves. So yeah. We knew we wouldn't get off the moon. Way. Yeah, we I knew we wouldn't get off the space. moon. Yeah. T.O. in space was good, yeah. <laughs> T.O.'s in space. I yeah. just remembered I just remembered one that I think was awesome. Um, Ash, the finale to Ash's Zoo was awesome. Oh yeah, I freaking like the this. It was you who edited, it, or was it Jasmine, or was it both I, of you guys? Or I mean, she she edited most of the episode. I edited yeah. just like that last twenty seconds. Yeah. So so the that whole episode, like all the the music and everything building up to it, and then the finale part where you did the after effects and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was just like so proud in that moment, like mm. seeing that for the first time, because it's one of those things where it's like I've always wanted to tell stories, I've always wanted to write, do all that kind of stuff, and so um, you know this is sort of a story that we've been building together, and so to see it kind of actualize in a way that was so exciting, and then to see the fans react in such a positive way, like I was just like and uh, <laughs> through the <laughs> roof oh, to listen to it. Ash talk about Mr. Boa earlier and about the uh, the, the shots, y- you get an idea of like. The what the the vision that he's got for this sort of uh, editing, you know, because the what what he edited in that last episode was incredible. I it, like the the little Easter eggs that you hid in there, you know. That you sneaky, I, was, I didn't even know. I was amazed <laughs> yeah. that people caught on to it the way that they did, you know. But yeah. it's it's that eye for detail that I I just loved. Yeah, I agree with you, Price. That that was a really great episode. Just really great work. Um, one of my favorite stuff is also the things that just catches us by surprise i was trying to figure out how to actually put it in the list but it's that moment in ultimate chicken horse where rick decides to put the arrow (laughs) and then we were just like whoa who did that and all of a sudden rick just started busting out laughing and the thing that the, 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 the what makes it the best is that I was sitting there and I turned around and I just looked at Rick and Rick's got this I did it you know? he was like ah like that and just seeing that madness behind his eyes at that moment just destroyed me it's and so you've obviously seen what happened I was crying afterwards because I was laughing so hard I, remember I think that, that that's that's why we I mean obviously we we do this because we love all of you guys but. Like every other Saturday when we get together and we record like our big block of footage, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, I mean, it's a lot of work doing mm-hmm. this, what we do. Yeah. And we, we all put a lot of work into this, but when we come to Ash and Jazz's on Saturday to record, we're, we're jazzed to play yeah. games. Like <laughs> we're excited to, to play, like to find out who's going to be the winner of ultimate chicken horse to find out who's going to win in gang beast to find out what games we're going to be playing this week you know like we still get so excited about these games you know and i mean it's 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 awesome that we're able to do this yeah 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 absolutely so final <laughs> question final question is, is the new year's resolution guys what's your new year's resolution for this year i want to by the end of this year try to do this full time 
if I can. Same. I know, and I saw on the uh, doc that you said full time, full time stumped a night. I didn't know stumped what else to call it. <laughs> now, now we need to figure out now and for good. Are we stumped a nights or are we stumped Tony ins? <sighs> wow, I think I called us. Well, I, I called us one of those in my city's city skylines playthrough. What was it? I think it was Stump Tonight's. Someone will know. Someone will know. I Someone will come at it. I think it was Stump Tonight's. Yeah. So like, I guess it's Stump Tonight's. I guess Stump well, Tonight's but, is where but, it's at, right? But that, is but that that's what we not are? What our, not what our fans are. I think that's what we are. What our fans are is something else. Wait, we've got to be separate from the fans? I feel like because, this is a division yeah, we, we've had this, that we shouldn't uh, create. I'll, I'll just throw it out there. We've had these two different suggestions that have been at, at odds with each other of either Lumberjacks or Twigs. Yeah, that's true. So I think it's for the fans to decide. Maybe I they should think, vote yeah, for that. It's, it's, it's in their zeitgeist. Well, there you go. It is in your zeitgeist. And so let us know in the comments. Anybody who's made it one hour and 38 minutes into this podcast. <laughs> Stumptonites or Stumptonians? Lumberjacks or Twigs? Personally, I'm going to give you my, I think Stumptonians and Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks because they're tough. Twigs get chopped down by Lumberjacks. You want to be the Lumberjack. That's And absolutely. I'm going to say Plus, Stumptlandians because there's axes Portlandia. on the shirt. That's true. There are yeah. axes on the shirt. Yeah. Not that, not that I helped design that or anything. I, 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 I don't know. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got full time uh, stump tonight from yep, Jazz, yep, which I yep. think is a very good idea. I'm hoping my two year mark at my job is November. I'm hoping by then I put in my two years, get that experience, and then maybe like bounce. Yeah. Her whole job watches this podcast. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I, and honestly, you know I know what? that only. I, you know, my coworkers know what I do. Mm -hmm. I was not, you know, one of them is very surprised. The other one's like, I support you, but I'll be sad for you to go, and that makes it even more harder. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I, you know, I know that uh, regularly, uh, as far as our gang beast numbers go, not everybody listens to this podcast, but <laughs> people that do listen to this podcast, uh, obviously we want to be able to do this full time. We want yep. to be able to make more things for you guys to up the editing budget, you know, and the fact is that we all, to a degree or another, all have jobs outside of Stumped, you know? So we're really hoping to be able to just do this full time and put all of our energy into making great content. Oh, man, we could do so much if we were doing so this full time. Yeah. All uh, right, so, so uh, right, what do you got, Price? Yeah, I want to finish school. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I've been in graduate school for a very long time. Uh, and ever since we started Stumped, I've been sort of focusing a lot on Stumped. And I have, you know, and so I do Stumped, and I teach. And then I have all these other responsibilities associated with teaching. And so then my dissertation work comes all the way at the end. And so like, I have done very little on that over the past couple of years. And I need to get it done. So my goal for this year is to finish, to be done with school by next fall. And the fact that Stumped Stumped is now, you know, approaching that point at which, you know, I could potentially stop teaching and still be able to get by and finish my dissertation work um, means that I think that there's a really good chance of that actually happening. So finishing school is one. Um, I also need to start working out again. I put that off. Uh, also, <laughs> wait till around, you're 33, my roughly friend. Roughly around when we uh, started doing stumped, I kind of started slacking on the that because you know it just takes hey, time. When you started doing video games as a full time job, yeah, you started getting out of shape. Works, huh? uh, it's so hard I mean, to find time in that, you dude, know. It, you're recording, I, you're editing, and then you know, uh, for me and Ash, we're working. <laughs> so the that's, only that, that's my shape these days, more and more. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's hard it, to find that, that that's time. That's the that's the uh, the the what what's it what's uh what's Ethan's uh the the, <laughs> the chub and tuck the chub and, and tuck that is that is the chub <laughs> and tuck exactly great job uh yeah. and so I think that yeah those two things and then full time stumped by the end of the year I think it's something that is if you had asked us a year ago I wouldn't have expected that it was something that we could do um by this time next year but it increasingly is looking like that could be the case so. Mm -hmm. If that happens, then that'll be a dream come true, and you know I'll be done with school. Can just do that, and it'll be it'll be perfect. So yeah, that's that's my my next year. No big deal. Rick, what you got? Um, you know what? I'm not gonna shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. That's your New Year's revolution. Just just full beard. Yeah. 2017 is gonna look like ZZ Top. Yeah. How's uh, How's Mel feel about that? Well, she's fine. Okay. Mel, once it gets to a certain length and it's not too prickly, mm. she doesn't mind it so much. It's, gotcha. it's when it's like in its short little stubby, like little prickly phase that she doesn't. I feel like, like you were it. pointing at me when you said she that. She likes so me weird. with a beard. So, uh, you know, I I'm just, I like I, him with a beard. That's why he's kept it. 
I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to shave this year. I might trim it up a little bit, but you know what? I'm going to say it's ZZ from, Top or nothing. From Rick. January to December, Rick is not going to shave. Go for All it, bro. Right, full Go beard. How long that lasts? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Once you start getting like real itchy somewhere around like March or April. <laughs> no, no, no. The itchy part's over. I'm, I'm, I'm good now. Oh, it, it comes and goes. <laughs> yeah, it comes and faces. <laughs> yeah, it's it's circular. What about you, Ash? <laughs> You're the mystery holdout. What what's your stumped resolution? Silver play button on a chain around my neck. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what do we need to get silver play? Uh, 100,000 subscribers. We're, we're going to be getting there, it in like two weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what? So Hopefully in two it, weeks. It, then, it, then it takes like Google like six months to actually Yeah, we won't play. get it until like June. Yeah. Hey, like, but has, we'll have has it in Mathis our even gotten his yet? I don't I think know. he finally got his recently. <laughs> so how are we going to divide this time out? Because I want to wear it too. Yeah. We're, yeah, so. we're gonna have to divvy up the the. We're, it's gonna be a shared custody sort well, like, of a thing. Le- legitimate question. I'm wondering if they'll let us order extra. Like, if we were like, can 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 I send you some money and you send me? Can another I just get one? like a little one, like a little tiny one. Huh. Because my thing is, like, I would love to have my master's degree, my PhD, <laughs> and a YouTube play button. <laughs> Bryce, so I'm just looking forward to the time there. that we can say we have a legitimate doctor on our team. Okay? Uh, well, Dr. You, can Price. Me, you can call me master, but that's a weird thing. Yeah. So. <laughs> my sick master? Sick I am, master. I am the sick master. Yeah. I was the sick master all along. No. You texted you were, yourself. You were texting yourself. <laughs> this is what so, happens when we go way over two hours. Like two hours. Well, way over one hour. We start to get really silly. Oh, uh, man. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say that that has been our year in review episode, guys. We've uh, covered the, the top topics that we, we thought would uh, be good for a year in review. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if Absolutely. you did... I hope you guys will give us a like. I hope you'll share and subscribe uh, because we have been stumped. I've been Rick, joined by Jazz, Christ, and Ash. And we'll see you guys next year. Bye. 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 Oh, blue. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>